Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at creating this model to start building a Spartan helmet in FreeCAD. We're going to be tackling the visor and we're going to be using a part workflow and understanding how you would actually create this. It may look complex but it's actually quite simple. If you like what you're seeing please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0 I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So to get an idea of the shape and the form of a Spartan helmet, I've just done a quick Google image search and I've got a number of results coming up. So we've got all what we need to create this helmet. Now I'm not looking at a single one. I wanted to make something of my own. But one thing you'll see regarding the form of these helmets, they all evolve around two primitive shapes. So for instance, if we looked at something like this, if we broke it up into different parts, we can see that this part here, so getting rid of this cutout and basically straightening this off like so, we just have a cylinder. It's a hollow cylinder, so this is really a tube. So what we're doing is matching the shape to the nearest primitive object. This part here is half a sphere. So we're looking for a sphere and a tube. And you can see this in all of them. So we're looking at here, you just straighten this off and it's a cylinder with a sphere on top. Same for this one, the same for this part here, this one. And you see it everywhere on every single image it's just a cylinder with a sphere on top. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to come over to FreeCAD and I'm going to start in the part workbench. Now, like we said, we need a cylinder. Now, this is totally up to you of what size you want to make this. And let's take the outer radius. And I'm going to go 14 for that, inner radius of 10 and a height around about 25. So we've got that cylinder there like so. And the inner radius is a bit big, so let's go for 12 for the inner radius. There we go, so we've got that there. Let's do a bit more, 12.5. So that's our starts. We're not gonna worry about the sphere just yet. And it's up to you what you want to do with this. You may want to modify, say some of the height, make this slightly higher. 30 something like that so looking back at our images you can see that we've got that there and we're looking something roughly like this kind of style so looking from the side you can see how the cylinder has been reduced down so this part's been cut away and this part's been cut away let's add that to our model to do that we need a sketch and we're going to place it along the yz plane so new sketch, YZ, and OK. We're going to section view through that, or sketch, view section, and we start sketching. Looking at the profile from the side, you can see how we have a chunk that's taken out here. And sometimes these are hinged. So you see in films, these are hinged, so you can push them up. Also, you can push this up because of the plume at the top. But we're going to do something very similar. So that's sketching here. I'm going to use a polyline and just put in a basic sketch like so. So this is the basic shape that it's going to look like. And we're going to bring this up to the top, bring this down to the bottom and bring this up. That's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to close that and come over to the part workbench. Our sketch sits in the middle of our tube. Now we're going to extrude that sketch this way and this way. So we're going to keep it in the center. To do that, click on the sketch, use the extrude, come down, make sure the symmetric is checked. That means it'll go out this way and this way. And then extrude it by an amount here. And we're going to go 50 millimeters. So it's going to take it beyond that surface. It doesn't matter as long as it encapsulates that surface there. So we look from the top, this has to be within here. Now, if we use an intersection with this, so select the tube 
and select the extrude cut part boolean intersection and see what's happened it's created the start of our helmet there our visor of our helmet now i want this basically on the pivot so i don't want to connect to the back so we can come into this common come into the original extrude and double click that sketch and what i like to do is bring back the tube press the spacebar on the tube use the section view so i can see through it to the sketch and we can move this and this means if i move it here it's going to be cut off so there will be a void in our shape if i hit close you can see what's happened there click on that tube that one there press the space bar and it's cut off there it's cut off a bit too far at the back and just a case of just manipulate that into position so we've got that there so we've got our initial shape we can modify this by coming into the tube and say let's make these walls a bit thinner so i'm going to go 13 there so that makes those a bit thinner i'm also going to come into the sketch bring back the tube using the section view and add more detail to this again looking back at our reference material we can see we've got a cut out here and this curves down this way or it curves this way so we can decide from those what we actually want let's come out to the top see what we've got here you see how this kicks out at this point i'm going to show you how to do that as well so looking at this one i want to be a bit more aggressive with this angle let's bring this down to about here and here that's about it and i'm going to add an arc in so i'm going to split use a split tool or sketch sketch geometries and come over to split edge add it in here hit escape and delete that line use the end point and rim point arc and auto constrain we've got the auto constraints on in the task look at the auto constraints that's checked that means when i hover over we've got quincy constraint same for this side and we can add that arc in there hit escape and just manipulate that into position so something like that and when we hit close we can see what's happening click on the tube press the space bar we're starting to get in the shape that we want if we're not happy with the heights we can come into the tube and change the height so let's go 35 we may need to come into the sketch and bring back the tube and change this slightly so that's maneuver this tube transform and we'll bring this down and you can see what i'm doing so i've brought that down actually let's give myself a bit more at the top as well okay that double click the sketch section view and we've got a bit more to play with so let's bring this up here and bring this down i'm going to delete this line as well and add an arc we we'll just bring the arc to this point and this point and just add an arc in there and hit close and we're starting to get the shape that we need in there look at the sketch again and that's section view through that click on right and bring this in a bit more this part will be removed anyway so this part down the bottom and we're starting to get the look that we want just be careful of this happening so you can see that this comes down to a sharp point we may need that sharp point but if we do have something like that then it's worth going to the sketch and just looking at this line deleting that point and adding something else in here so let's add a little line that connects those two up hit escape and we've got that there and close and we can manipulate that into position so let's bring about the tube and see what's happening there and the sketch double click the sketch use the section view and bring this in so we've got a straight down the bottom there remember you may need to constrain these all up with constraints but i'm just moving through this quickly to get you an idea of the workflow 
click on the tube press space bar and you can see how that's starting to form. If you have something like this, then if we look at the tube, we can see what's happening. I'm going to click on the tube, look at the view and come down to the transparency and bring this transparency up to around about 60. Now, if you look at the walls, you can see how we've transitioned through those walls. And this is what's creating that point there. So you can see that point in there. Let's hide the common. So as it moves through the walls, we get that cut through there. Let's double click on the sketch and bring this back. So it sits the other side of that wall. And hit close. Hide the tube and bring back the common. And then we've got a much better transition through there. Let's now work on the front. Come to the drop down and click the sketcher. Make sure nothing's selected and create a new sketch. We're looking along the XZ plane. So the XZ plane there and hit OK. If it flips us around the wrong way, it may flip us around this way. What we can do is just close and then click on that sketch and come up to sketch and reorientate sketch. And then we pick the XZ plane and hit reverse. And that will put us around the other side. I don't want to be around this side, so I'm just going to change that again by coming out to sketch, reorientate sketch, XZ, don't need reverse direction, and hit OK. That's there. I need this sketch in front, so go into the model, click on the sketch, data tab, placement, and we need the position. Because it's not attached to anything, we need to position it along the Y. So if we change the Y axis now, go into the Y axis and just move this through so it sits above, then when I click on front, we can start sketching. I'm looking for this shape here to be sketched upon there. So something like this or this. It's symmetrical, so I only need to do one side. So that's come back and use the polyline and start sketching this in. So I'm going to come down to here and I want to sketch in the void. So I'm looking to cross this section to here. Remember this is the front of the face. So if you've got your transparency on, you're going to see the back as well. So let's add the eyes just roughly for the time being. Come down and we need to add the nose in here as well. So something like that and connect up to this line here. Hit escape, zoom in, escape again, and we can position this. So I'm going to position this up here. These need to go along a bit more and we'll come in. So we're just doing the void, the void of where this is going to be. So looking at something like this, let's highlight that, I've highlighted all that sketch and then I'm going to click the vertical line, go up to sketch, sketch tools and then we're looking at the symmetry, places it over here. These two points are not going to be connected so we can take those two points and connect them up. Also make sure that points on this line as well with a point on object constraint. We can start putting in symmetry constraints against these two here and this line with symmetry. And we will do this for all of these points going upwards. But I'm just gonna leave that like that. I'm also gonna close the shape, placing a line, connect up to this one, to this one, making sure that's connected. From here to here, with a quincy constraint and I'm just gonna put a bit of symmetry into these two as well, onto this one. Make this symmetry and click on the redundant constraint and hit delete. So we've got this shape here. If I hit close, you can see what's starting to happen. If I take that shape now, 
and use the extrude and we want to extrude forwards so in the part extrude and it's going to go in the reverse direction so reverse this way and we set this to say 100 millimeters there and that will take it all the way through there it's a bit too much so click on the extrude come down and we can change that say 50 millimeters and if it's not going in reverse we just change this reversed here so there we go so we've got that one now it's going all the way through and out the back if we have problems in that this actually intersects through here we can bring this back in so come into the model and we just change the length and just bring the length down and hitting the refresh shortcut to allow you to do that like so because what we want to do is just take the extrude and our mask and cut this into here so first of all we need something to keep so we want this one part we want to keep the part we want to remove control click on those and using the cut and we're starting to produce the face mask there just click on this sketch and press the space bar and see how that's starting to come out the common at the moment if we look at the view it's still transparent let's go here it's saying zero set this to 100 and then set it back to zero do the same for the cuts as well so at the moment we've taken a number of operations against there but the transparency hasn't reset so set it to 100 so back to zero there we go that's back to normal and it's starting to look quite good actually so we're looking at that bring around to the side and you can see how that's starting to take shape very simple workflow now this is all well and good but if we look back to say this one it flares out at the bottom so how do we do that? It's all to do with that tube. So that tube there is the basis of how that's been created and the shape it's taken. We need a different shape. Looking back, if we follow this, it has curvature to this. So we're gonna use a revolve and we're gonna use something like a bell-shaped revolve in there to recreate that curvature. Going back to the tube, looking at it from the right, if we bring this out here we would get the right shape to do that I need to replace this with something with something like a revolve what we're going to do is try to replace that without deleting anything in here just relinking some of these operations for instance the cut this one here was done against the common the common was done against the tube and the extrude so in theory if we remove the tube and add a revolve nothing should break we may need to do some repositioning of the sketches to get the right cut but we should be good let's come over to the sketcher and try so in the sketcher i am create a new sketch make sure nothing's selected create a new sketch and we're looking along the yz plane yz okay it's in the middle where we want it and we're going to make a profile for a revolution i'm going to follow this tube to an extent so i'm going to use the polyline i'm going to connect up to the center line i'm going to come out click around at about this point and then i'm going to hit escape and change to a b spline connect up to that point and we're going to come down and start to flare out down to the bottom like so hit escape we've got this curvature now like so we can adjust this to what we want but i'm looking for something like this i'm going to first try this with a shell so if i revolve this it will make a shell it's not a walled object but it still allows us to do our cut we'll just get a shell which we need to thicken out let's hit close and use this sketch by clicking on it need to be over in the part workbench make sure that sketch is selected 
So the profile, the parts, revolve. This is going to revolve around this line here. So this line going through the Z axis, we draw a line here. This is the Z axis, you can see it here. Come over a direction Z. We're in the middle, so if I view and toggle the axis cross, which I cannot do at the moment, let's cancel out there and view toggle axis cross. You can see our axis cross there is in the center. So that's going to revolve around that Z axis. Click the sketch, use a revolve from the toolbar this time. Z axis is selected, automatically selects 360 and hit OK. We created that shape there. So it's a bell slash bucket shape. And so we've still got the tube in here. What we're now going to do is select this common. So let's hide this cut. We're dealing with this common here. Also, I'm going to hide the revolve, which I've done. So take the common, look at the shapes that it's using. Tube and extrude. If I click on that, we get a button on the end. Click. And if I come up to the top, see the tube, just click it. Come down to the revolve and click that. And that adds that revolve in there. We could also use the scroll bar on here and select it from here. Let's hit OK. And then click off. We can see that's transformed now and the bottom's flared out. But take note of what's happened with this. So we've got this curvature here. It comes up here. So we may not have had that before and it may affect our sketch. So this is strewed. Won't take proper effect against this. So we need to take the original strewed sketch. So this is strewed. See how that's extruded across there and change that. It's using an intersection. And you can see that because we've got a revolve, then it's actually just intersecting that surface. It hasn't got any thickness. So we need to add some thickness to this surface. Let's hide that extrude and also hide the tube because we don't need that anymore. You can see that's moved outside of the common now and seen at the top. Go into the revolve and double click the sketch for the profile. I'm going to highlight this B spline and I'm going to click this point in here and this will be the last point I've selected. So that one there, just select that, just click it. That means when I copy that, coming up to sketch, sketch tools and copy, you'll see that we get a line here that we can move this. And I'm going to move this across to about here. Let's create a copy there. We can close this at the bottom with a line that connects up this point and this point. And we need a line for the top. I know we're not going to use this. Let's come in to here and also close up these two points here as well with another line. So we've got a closed sketch. We've got a redundant constraint. Let's click that and hit delete. So we've got a fully closed sketch. Everything's closed, everything's connected. If I hit close now and click off, we can see we've got thickness to this now. So you can see that there. We look at the shape and look at the extrude that goes through there. You still see we've got some problems. So we need to fit the extrude here to get the right shape. So this is our revolve. This is our sketch for the side extrude. Let's double click that and use a section view. And we can see where that is actually intersecting. So we're getting that curve there. So we can bring this out now and bring this out here. Remembering that when we move these, if we haven't got them locked down, they will move as well. So we can decide where that's going to go. Something like that. Hit close. And that's looking better. Let's hide that revolve and bring back this sketch. That will remove all this material. 
Might want to get rid of this kick here. We'll do that in a minute. Now remember that we haven't touched this cut. Haven't touched that at all. We haven't moved this extrude. So we haven't modified this sketch. And that's that extrude going through there. Pressing the space bar just to hide those. And we'll collapse these and click on the cut and press the space bar. Come down to the common and hide the common. And we're starting to get that shape in there. Got a bit of a problem in that we have a problem with our revolve. So you can see our revolve, we've got two, basically two surfaces that's in there. Why is that? If you come across that, well, let's have a look. Let's come over to the common and look at the revolve, the revolve here. See where it says solid false? Let's change that to true and click off. It's now become solid. So we've got our solid back there. The walls may be a bit thick as you see there. So we can change that by coming into the sketch of the revolve. Remember the revolve detects the fitness. So we've got the thickness here and we'll just bring that in. We can set the length between these if you want. I'm just going to bring these in. And hit close. And we've got the starts of our helmet. It kicks out at the bottom. Let's hide this sketch. So you can see from basic extrudes, intersections and cuts, we can start to build something quite complex. So there you have it, a very simple workflow for this visor. There's a lot of improvements to make and we're going to continue with this video in creating the full helmet in a number of sittings. So those will be slowly released to the channel as I make them and hopefully at some point we'll be 3D printing this as well. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.